Once he What's up, guys? Happy Saturday. Guess what time it is? It's time to win again. Oh, I'm so excited about this show. We gotta kick it up, cranking it up. 10x. How we doing? How we doing? Amy in Atlanta. Happy Saturday. Oh yeah, Jill had had these shirts made. We had guys, them all at celebration. Ahead. So cool. You guys could do anything on Saturday, but you're deciding to join us, so thank you. I'm going to give a few seconds here for other people to jump on. I had a, a funny story. When I was at Celebration, I saw these couple couple of girls at Celebration walk around with this shirt on, right? Totally inspired <laughs> yeah. by Paul and I. Jill had them made, and I said, hey, where did you get that shirt? Do you know what that means? They had no idea what this shirt meant and what the back meant. You should do what I do. They were just wearing it around. It's kind of funny. <laughs> anyway, drinking an e-shot. Do you know that you can open up your e-shots upside down? What? It's a little bit easier for me to do it that way. Those things are magic. Magic. Split it with me? Oh, no, no. no. <laughs> um, I've already had four of them today, so. <laughs> Drink. I will spit that out of my mouth. Thank you. All right. Are y'all ready? Miami. Thanks for being on. On oh, it's a beautiful Saturday. We've got some pretty cool stuff today. Yeah. That some of you may not even be aware of. So we'll make sure that we kind of give you a big general overview. If you're brand new to Periscope, welcome. We have um, quite a few to people, quite a few to people, listen, quite a few people from Australia jump on and message us and they are getting phenomenal results using Paul and I's uh, new 2.0 How cool, guys. Technique. Guys, we're just, we want the world to win. We want everyone to step it up yeah. and make some serious changes over the next 90 days. Guess what, it's day six. On the 90 day game plan, every day we're gonna remind you, every single day. We are in the trenches with you. We're going step by step by step every day. We focus how can we add value, who can we serve today, and how can we crank it up, step it up, and 10x everything. So, so if you are brand new to Periscope, just wanna do a couple reminders that this platform is not the most smoothest. So if you get disconnected, no worries jump on your laptop or over onto your computer and just find Global Executives on Twitter. Scroll down and you'll find the Periscope link. You can watch the replay. You have 24 hours. And I also want to say this. There is a met method behind our madness and the reason why we choose Periscope and why we choose the 24 hour replay. It is to create urgency. It is to let you know that we, are, we don't record these you got 24 hours and then it is gone. We heard that somebody is recording, that's awesome, but we don't want to share that information with you because we wanna create urgency. We are in a 90 day game plan and we're trying to get you off of this kind of kind of haphazardly doing things and doing it at your own pace and you're doing all, everything is relaxed at your own leisure. We are in a 90 day game plan. We're cranking things up 10 X and we want to create urgency. So you're on these calls every single day mm. with us yeah. because we're in the trenches with you. We're building this business with you 10 X and everything during the next 90 day, next 90 days. And for you to watch these replays at your own leisure doesn't put urgency and this type of guys doing the same thing you've always done. will get you the same thing you've always got. So, we're trying to create that urgency. We're trying to keep you accountable, showing up every yes. day. Show up every day. Do your work. Get to work. This is your business. Nobody's going to open the doors for you except for you. We're just here to knock on your door and say, hey, it's time to go. Yeah. So that's what we do every day. Hopefully, um, you know, uh, we don't hurt everyone's feelings, but uh, that's sometimes we get Today's a it. red show. That's a red show. <laughs> Believe it. We don't mean to hurt your feelings. <laughs> we love you. But with that said... All right, guys, let's dig in. So, so yesterday we went over, real quick, the two-week turnaround. We went over uh, where we should be spending the majority of our time. No, it wasn't the two-week turnaround. It was just the kind of the, the success. Oh, that was two days ago. Yesterday yeah. was the success key. Right. Coming up for air, kind of reassessing what do we have, what have we learned, what have we not learned. You know, when, do we, you know, when did you guys jump on with us? Um, and then, you know, also the... Uh, where we should be spending the majority of our time. You know, we should be spending the majority of our time prospecting, 
and following up and enrolling rather than getting ready to get ready, get your business cards in your office ready or trying to train people when you don't have anything to train because you haven't done it yourself. Remember, it's learn, do, teach. First you have to learn it and then you have to do it before you teach it. So keep that order in mind and I think you guys will um, start to uh, crank up your, your results for sure. Oh, thank you. Best leaders ever. I don't know if we're the best leaders, but we've learned from the best. Guys, I got to So we love Jill Bowman. We love Tracy O'Malley, yeah. Tanya Kirkpatrick, Lee Brent Shaw, Lisa and Ash Aldridge. Oh my God. So many amazing leaders have given us this information and all we're doing is packaging it in a great way and presenting it to you. So it's nice and condensed we're, and super simple, right? We're becoming so. great thieves. We're stealing everything and giving it back to you from other people. Yes, so, so how brilliant are we? <laughs> There's no, no magic. but thank you for that. We appreciate <laughs> that. If if what we say and the way that we say it helps you move, then that's all that matters because you know everyone has a different learning style. Everyone resonates with somebody different. So if you resonate with us, then even better. And let's keep growing. Oh, I love that we're Robin Hoods. I'm gonna <laughs> steal that. Look, I'm gonna steal that too. We're Robin Hoods. <laughs> Super thieves. <laughs> okay, a couple of reminders. Um, and it's this, Paul and I, from the very beginning, when we started our Periscope episodes was to teach you to get off the employee mindset and to shift your mindset over to the entrepreneur mindset. And it is literally like pulling teeth because we are so, so uh, geared towards thinking like an employee. We want, you know, it's, it's a Guys, scarcity we've, mindset. We've been conditioned. We've been conditioned. Yeah. We, it's a scarcity mindset. We get over emotional in things and then it blocks us from abundance. We have instant gratification when you're an employee. All of this stuff we've got to get rid of. And the only way that you're going to get be able to get rid of that is to begin learning to read and read every single day so you can shift your mindset over to the entrepreneur mindset. Because if you're stuck in this business, most likely it is because, is because you're not reading. Paul and I are literally doing 30 books in 30 days. This is my newest book called Jesus Entrepreneur or spirit. I think they call it a spirit entrepreneur, right? It's literally putting the soul back into my work. It's not so much just about <laughs> success, but it is about significance. So whether you are religious or not, you're going to find some amazing, amazing entrepreneurial tips in this particular book. That's what I'm reading. Today is I think day, day, six, six, day six or day seven. seven. I've read so day many seven, books. Yeah. So please get off the crazy train and I want all of you to be reminded that every single moment of every hour to start doing self assessment checks. Where are you mentally? Are you in the game? Are you off on the crazy train? So get off the crazy train. And remember Paul and I, when we first began this business, it was literally strategically and consciously making these self analysis, self analysis checks to make sure that we're off the crazy train. I can't tell you how many times, that I would try to brand myself or post on Facebook and then delete the whole thing because I would second guess myself. Mm -hmm. And I know many of you do that. Guys, real quick, I want I want to I want to highlight this point. If you don't consciously take control of your emotions in your mind, you're destined for failure. You we uh, this is the way I picture it. We are born into this world and 99.9% .9 of us are all growing up in an employee mentality household and every year that goes by we get a little bit more of that crap shoveled on top of us and before you know it we're buried in the employee mindset so deep that when something like this comes along it, you have to dig your way out just to just to see the light and then just and then from there now it's time to climb and build your entrepreneur mindset Get to the 10 feet tall and bulletproof mindset and crush through your goals. Guys, if you want an extreme result, remember you're buried under this mindset for years, decades and decades for some of us. So uh, I want to remind you, if you're about to brand yourself and post something on Facebook, do not second guess yourself. All I want you to do, this is my trick that helped me until I learned to get off the crazy train, is that once I start typing my post, I take a moment, I take a deep breath, and I just say a small little prayer or affirmation or set some intentions that whoever needs to see this post, it will reach them. So I ask my angels to kind of bless my post, and I hit post, and I let it go. I literally bless and release. 
So if that trick helps you, please try it. Um, don't second guess yourself. Again, that's the crazy train. We are in this together and we need your help to reach so many people. This gift is exactly that. It is a beautiful gift that we must give to people, but we've got to get off this crazy train, second guessing ourselves about what we're doing because we've been socially programmed to think that everything we post is going to annoy somebody. So stop that. Your posts do not annoy somebody. And plus, Paul and I always teach energy first, technique second. And if you're giving out the energy that is going to annoy somebody, guess what it's going to do? It's going to annoy somebody. So just set the intention that this particular post, my words will bless somebody and guess what it will do? It will bless somebody. So again, start doing the self analysis check. Don't second guess yourself. Don't think, do not think that it will annoy people that you've been socially programmed to think that it's going to annoy somebody. You've been taught that. So get it off your mind. It's not going to annoy somebody. We need to 10 X our business and we're going to 10 X everything. This is how you're going to build a successful business because this is what I want you all guys to know. Paul and I are teaching you new 2.0 business methods. How easy is it to build this business now in 2015 on social media? We've got millionaires in our company that built this business on a nine day system going door to door or phone call to phone call. They built it and built and built a massive organization and you can build it literally in half the speed, if not faster than that in, in half the time yeah, and half the time using social media. So this is why we're teaching you how to build a business utilizing social media. So you're working smarter and not harder and faster. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, I know, I know people say, you know, don't, who cares if we're annoying people? That's a red probably who's saying that, <laughs> but blues and whites internalize everything. And I want you to take the emotion out because it's really, really hard for blues and whites to think that they are annoying people because it, it does it's, mean it, yeah. it actually really affects people yeah. in, in those ways. Yes. Blues worry. They um, do. But, so. but the thing is most of the stuff that, that we worry about if we're a blue or we have some white, um, is actually not true. It's just conditioning. Mm -hmm. uh, what you'll find is the more that you do it, the, the more that you'll understand that most people don't see most of your stuff anyway. Yes. Remember we talked about the Facebook algorithm. So when you're 10 Xing everything, you want to blast your brand. You want to make sure that people are trying or, or going to be able to see your post. But right now, because the way the Facebook algorithm works, most people do not unless you know how to manipulate it. And we teach you how to manipulate the new Facebook algorithm because Facebook does not work like it did one year ago or two years ago. So you have to learn to manipulate it in your favor. Mm -hmm. But I want to show you something because remember yesterday we talked about taking a deep breath, having an aerial look at what's going on in your business. And we want to make sure that you understand this particular part, because if you're brand new in the business, this will be for you because you need to understand it. There is a special leader that I want to mention and give a special shout out. His name is Ash Aldridge. If you're on his team, holla. He taught me this one thing and he probably said it, said it in passing, but he has no idea the profound effect that it had on me and my business because had he not said this, I probably would have quit this business. So that's why this episode is going to be super important for you to understand if you're on Lisa and Alsha's, um, Lisa and, and Ash's team. It's important that you understand this. And also if you don't understand this because you're brand new, you will be mind blown, right? Because again, Paul and I are teaching you to get from employee mindset over to entrepreneur mindset. And whether you have a traditional business, a franchise or a network marketing business, it makes no difference. There is an ebb and flow for all businesses throughout the year. And you need to understand where the ebb is going, where the flow is going, when to 10 X, when to crank things out. Because if you don't do this, cause some of, well, let's bring up the whiteboard. So you'll kind of see what I'm talking about. Well, real quick, before we do, I just want to go over, uh, the one thing that we do tend to go over quite a bit and that's the rules of the game, because you're going to see how this fits into what we're going to talk about today. The reason we want to mention this is because just like in our employee life, just like in our normal life, right, outside of this business, there's an ebb and flow. There's an ebb and flow in our health, in our relationships, mm. in our wealth, in um, everything. A lot of people don't see the patterns, but if you look at your life overall, you can see patterns in your life. You can see when things were up, 
You were doing certain things. You were thinking a certain way. You were acting a certain way. When things are down, you were you were doing probably the opposite or less of the positive aspects. Um, so when you when you understand that, like she said, we're taking from employee mentality to an entrepreneur mentality. We also need to understand that it's no different in the employee mentality. It's just different how you look at it. Okay, so. Real quick, the rules of the game. This is a mentality that you need to approach everything this in down. this business. Write this down if you're brand new. This is really, really important. We talk about this all the time, but the reason we repeat it is because it's that important. Please write this part down. Guys, this is make or break time. Yeah. The rules of the game are make or break. You either follow the rules or you break. Okay, so number one, you are 100% responsible for all of your efforts, and all of your results. Now you say, well, I don't have any results. Well, that is a result, okay? Mm -hmm. So keep in mind, you're responsible for that as well. So everything that you do and everything that you don't do, you are responsible for. It's not your upline's fault, it's not your cross line's fault, it's not the company's fault. It is your responsibility, whether you are flourishing or not in this business. And how do we know this? Because people that have, it ha that have had it harder than us, that have gone before us, have made it and made it big. We know that the business works, we know that the products works, we know that the industry is sound, we know that the environment for our global market uh, market is conducive with what we're doing today. So all those things in place and somebody says it's not working, well that's because you're responsible for your actions and your results. Okay. And the, you, the way you think. Exactly, you have right. to take responsibility for the way that you think. She said, we were consciously deciding to do self-assessments moment by moment every single day until it became a habit where we need to adjust accordingly to our goals. So that's number one, you're 100% responsible. Number two, energy first, techniques and mechanics second. What we're gonna to talk, to, uh, talk to you about today fits in a lot of number two here, the energy part of it. You have to understand the energy of the business. There are cycles, there are seasons, right? And we need to maximize and prepare uh, for the upcoming seasons or maximize the seasons that we're currently in, okay? Uh, number three is, now this is a tough one for a lot of people, and and this is something that was only the habits of what we would normally do, which is react, was only broken by replacing it with a new habit of responding as a leader, as a solution-oriented person. So. Rule of game number three, detach yourself from the outcome, work without expectation or emotion, put all your emotion into the goals and the affirmations, okay? So a lot of people have a hard time with that and they think that it's gonna come easily. It doesn't actually, that's probably one of the harder ones of the rules of the game because we're so conditioned to react, because we're so conditioned to uh, that if we don't get the response that we're looking for, that we automatically think that we and, suck and we're on the wrong page. And this isn't just about the business. This is about dealing with people on your team. You get frustrated or you get offended or you get angry or you get depressed or you get your feelings hurt. Stop that, right? Take the emotion out of it. Things aren't happening to you. As Jill Bowman says, things are just happening. Just happening. So when you can detach yourself from the outcome and just bless and release, but stay focused on your business and what you were doing, you're gonna be okay, all right? And, and then, then the, last one. the last one, rule of the game number four, is be like water, you want to learn to flow. Now, today, that's gonna to also be part of our talk and you'll see how that fits in because of the seasons of the business. So, we're in a great time. This is one of the busiest seasons in our industry and we need to take advantage of that. Not only is it good for us, but it's good for the people that we bring into our world because we have solutions that transform lives, okay? okay. So let's so, dive in. And again, this is a total shout out for Ash because if he wasn't the one that painted this big picture, again, I would have quit this business. And we hope that what we're about to teach will show you a bigger picture of what's happening so you can take a, a better assessment of what's going on in your business so you don't become frustrated. Yeah, guys, we played the mind games big time in the beginning. Um, don't think that just because we have <laughs> muscles and that we're fitness experts that it, this business came easily. It actually came very hard for us. It came very hard for us. So I want you all to realize that Paul and I had a lot of crazy train and it took us a lot, a lot of work to get off this crazy train so you're not alone. 
I know where you're at, and we're just trying to teach you to get home. Yep. Crazy train management, that's what we call it. Okay, some screenshot time, but guys, this is, this is awesome stuff here. Okay. This happens with most, with probably all businesses. Now, I've never owned a traditional business or a franchise, but this totally happened within our network marketing business. And if you've been in the network marketing business or owned your own business, you will probably agree with all of this. There are certain months within the year that your business, um, can't see the top, I can see it, so I'm not sure. I try to fix it, is that better now? Ebb and flow. So I've got all the months of the year listed, and there are certain times of the year when your business will flourish. It will flow much more easier than other months. Awesome. Right now, we're in September. June, July, and August are literally the slowest months of the year. And if you came into the business during the summer, it wasn't because that you couldn't build the business. It's just a natural thing for the business to be slow during this time. This is not when, and if you've been in the business for a while and you came into, you know, you're going into the summer months, this is not when you want to slow down and go on vacation and take a break from your business. This is when you really want to crank out the rule of five that Paul and I teach you about. You do not stop during the summer months. This is when you crank it out is in June, July, and August. And Paul and I began our Periscope episode and took our training to another level and our team. And it's no coincidence that in September we've had the biggest cycle of our business. In September. That's because we cranked it out during June, July, and August. Now, during September and October, we're going to 10x everything so we can create, because here's where we're creating the momentum, right? You're pushing this huge, big boulder up the hill, up the hill. You're creating the momentum, and then by the time you get to September, October, that, that boulder is on top of the hill, boom, easy. Right? You don't stop. This is when we're 10x in everything. This is when new products are being launched. We just came back from celebration. Guys, this is the launch pad for the massive action momentum here that you want to take during this time. This is going to blow the doors off of your business. So you'll see how this plays out throughout the year. So we're starting down here, which is where we're at right now, September uh, 5th, right? And for September, all of October, and usually midway to November. Um, maybe a little bit longer depending on you know where you're at. Um, you can really take advantage of the busiest season in our industry, 10x everything, and create a momentum. This, you, you have to look at your business as not in the present, but in the future. This will affect here and here. This will affect here. You see what I'm saying? Like you're working today for the future, not for today. Now November and December, now, you, many of you may think that it actually increases because of the holidays. Guys, this is where Paul and I was on the major crazy train because our business almost came to a screeching halt in November and December. Tracy O'Malley was the one that actually saved us from literally going insane because this is when she said, <laughs> crank it out. And we're like, what? Nothing is happening. It's slow. We see it being busy and everybody's going Christmas shopping and everything, but the business got really slow. But it's kind of like a wild card. Some people's business cranked out. Ours was super slow because we're brand new in the business. Mm -hmm. And Tracy kept saying, crank it out, crank push it out. Harder, push harder, push, push harder. Push harder. Yeah. She was the one that changed our business was right here. And during this time, because for some reason I didn't believe her. I didn't believe her, but I had faith. Kind of believed her, didn't believe her. I was going on the crazy train and then I, I met Ash at will call and he said you know what Lynette Tracy's right push push because January and February is when everything will change January <laughs> and guess and what? February is when everything will change and it was his that little hope that that I needed to keep going because I was I was desperate I didn't know what was happening down here I didn't see nothing move but you need to understand what's happening in November and December not much has happened but you gotta crank it out you gotta push through and then boom Everything happens. Beautiful magic starts happening in January, February, March, April, May.
big stuff starts happening, but you don't want to quit. You got to 10 X everything again because you got to push through because the summer months are coming. Guys, here's, here's the bottom line. Here's the bottom line. When we're talking about ebbing and flowing. We're talking about a season of the business. If you, if you look at the slow months, the slower seasons of our industry, right? What you'll see is that the harder you push in the slow seasons, the more effective your push will be in the high seasons. Does that make sense? That, that doesn't mean that you're going to stop pushing. Hold on one second. Our camera got goofy. Is that better? All right. Um, I, I, I want to I beat this point into, into our brains here. The harder you push in the slow seasons, the more effective your push in the high seasons is. The harder you push in the high seasons, the more you can, um, the more it's gonna help you drive through those slow seasons. Do you see how everything fits together? Guys, the beautiful part about this whole business is that there's more high seasons than there are slow. Summer's a bit slow in this industry. Um, not only in the industry, but in our particular, um, uh, I guess, niche of our industry, uh, we do health and wellness. In general, I've been in health and wellness for 20 years. Slow months are the summer and the holidays. Guys, th that's... There's no difference in the, in the worldwide trend of health and wellness and our trend in our business. The best part about this it's is what we've just entered on a worldwide scale in health and wellness. September and March, and March are your two biggest launch pads of business and growth that you, you would never expect. Now listen to what he's saying. Most people think it's January for health and wellness. It's actually not. It's actually September and March. Now, people do get totally motivated, but after about two weeks or maybe one month, people start falling off, but then they get re-motivated again in March because why? They want their bikini body for the summer. So they start getting re-motivated here. They'll want to jump on board with you. They'll want to know what your program is, and you'll notice your business will increase in March and of course it increases in September because people are going into the holidays it's actually September and March are one of your busiest seasons too another reason that these seasons are different everybody's out of their routine in the summer right school's out parents trying to figure out what to do with their kids <laughs> people you know, going on vacation yeah like you know that's kind of out of the routine September everybody gets back in their routine they can function a little bit more wrap their head around their schedule easier that's why things start to move there as well. So, what, the re, why are we talking about this? Why are we talking about this? Because we're talking about maximizing your efforts at key times of the year so that you can get maximum results. And to also get you off the crazy train because if you're in the summer months and your business isn't growing, because Paul and I got into the business oh. Guys. In April, May of last year, and then by June, July is when we started to kind of crank things out a little bit, and we didn't see anything. We heard crickets. Yeah, our, crickets. our effort stepped up, but the results didn't step Nothing up. We're moved. right in the middle of summer. We're like, uh, this sucks. This sucks. Nothing was moving. Yeah. And it wasn't until September, right after celebration, our first celebration last year, is when things started to move. We saw movement in September and October, and then mm -hmm. it went back down again in November and December. And we thought we were doing something wrong. It's not. You're not doing no. anything wrong. It's okay. just the ebb and flow of the business. So Tracy O'Malley was the one that told us, just keep pushing. Crank it out. Push, push harder. Yeah. Push harder. And it wasn't until Ash made the connection for me where it just really sunk in. And I was like, oh. And then, boy, did our business shift big time mm -hmm. by January, February. And I'm talking about, we went literally from like $150 a week all the way up to almost 1000 Literally, it happened that fast. And your business can do this too. And then it just launched again and again and again. Yeah. I mean, now it's way up there and it's ridiculous. It's awesome. But guys, real quick, I want to go over this. There's a... Um, there's a, there's a trend that I notice as I relate everything to my working out experience and bodybuilding. I always notice that from the time that I decided to, to um, really grow faster and get leaner and things like that, from day one, it took me about three months for the results to show up. 
in the way that I wanted to, right? So it's the same thing here. What we do today is not for today. It's for January. That's you why, see what I'm saying? That's why we started our Periscope episode 70 episodes back. Yeah, what we started at, at late June or early July for Periscope is starting to show up today. And sure enough, cycles are going up. Business is booming. We're connecting with more people. Yeah. Everything's working. Hopefully the same for you. It's not just about us. It's, it's about everyone that was on the journey with us so far. The same thing. And, 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 and our company uses the core four events strategically. Two of them happen to be placed in the perfect spot. One is in August, wow. right before the super busiest season of the year. And then one of it is in January where everyone can wrap their head around like a new fresh start and getting on that 10x crush everything in your path kind of mentality. <laughs> so I hope you understand everything is put together in that way because of the seasonal changes of our business. The best part about it is if you just push through in the, if you push during the, the high seasons and you push harder in the slow seasons, you're gonna have a business that just doesn't stop growing so, no so matter what season. So let's talk about what do we mean by push? Because you hear that, just crank it out, push through. What does that mean? Because if you're so, brand new, we're gonna kind of quickly go over the rule of five so you understand what exactly you should be doing. Because again, everything on Facebook, everything that you're doing to build this business is strategic. I never get on Facebook, whether it's on my phone or my computer, and just do random stuff. We're not playing Candy Crush, guys. No, everything that I post is strategic. Everything that I do is branding myself. Everything that I'm doing is motivating somebody or teaching or educating. So let's go over the rule of five if you've never heard of the rule of five. And if you have heard of the rule of five, then listen in really quickly so you can begin to teach your team what to do during September and October and then crank it out even more during November and December. But not right? only that, we're, we're talking about the rule of five today because this is key. The rule of five is everything. If you drop all of everything off that we talk about and you just 10X the rule of five, you will grow a business, okay? Um, it's going to be messy, but you'll grow it. And that's why we talk about everything else on the success key to help smooth out the process. Ooh, I like right? that. So, <laughs> I love him. I swear to God, I learned so much from this guy. <laughs> he's not just all muscle. I swear he's mostly brain. <laughs> okay, so. Okay, so really quickly with the rule of five, if you've got a pen and piece of paper, write this down because we're going to go over it really quickly. The rule of five, rule number one, is that you should be a product of the product. Please stop messaging your upline and giving the excuses that you cannot stay active. Mm. Nobody mm. understands struggle, financial struggle like Paul and I. When we began this business, we were taking showers in the community center. We had no phone. We had no cell phone. We had no internet. We had, no we had nothing. No money coming in. But we kept our business active. It was the thing that was going to be our saving grace. As Tracy O'Malley says, if nothing changes, then nothing changes. And we got busy really quick and we took this business seriously. Please be a product of the product. You have good, better, best in terms of what can you do each day regarding consuming your product. Whatever product, whatever company that you're in. Now guys, in the beginning, we, we, all we could do was was uh, to well, all we could do is just keep our business open. That's all we could do. That's all the product we would ever have for the entire month is to, because we're broke. We didn't have any resources. We we're like beg, borrowing, and stealing just to get our. We didn't steal. Uh, uh, well, no, no stealing, but uh, to get our to keep our business open. We, so we, you know, we we understand that you know if if you can't use all the products because of of certain reasons, that uh, that's one thing. But to go inactive, to not be able to keep your store open. Guys, let's take some responsibility. We're the CEO of our company. It's time to step up, especially now. It's 10x time. We're talking to people. We're assuming we're talking to everyone who wants to blow the doors off this thing and make six and seven figures a year. And that will not happen by accident. Lisa, guys. <laughs> we didn't steal. I swear <laughs> we didn't. But we did whatever we could to keep our business open. And that's what we're trying to let you know. You know, we pushed off bills if we had to, we pushed off car payments if we had to. Our business was our number one priority and it should be for you too. Rule number two of the rule of five is to please make sure that you are... Is it really oh, no, rule, no, rule, of, uh, rule, rule two of the rule of five is prospecting. 
Oh, I'm thinking of the, I'm thinking thinking of the two-week turnaround. Two turnaround. Guys, I'm sorry. Guys, would this... Okay, real quick, before we go deeper into the Rule 5, somebody had said, uh, is your Rule 5 the same as John Maxwell's? No, it's oh. it's not, but the concept came from him. This is where it came from. It came from Jack Canfield, talks about it too. But it's it's the those same... It's the five swipes at that big tree in the backyard. You take those five swipes a day, no matter how big that tree is, if you keep taking the five swipes every single day, the tree will eventually fall. So... On Christmas, get out there and take the five swipes. On your birthday, get out there and take the five swipes. When you're sick, get out there and take the five swipes at your business. If you're on vacation, take Guys, the five swipes. You don't you ever stop doing the rule of five. Let me, let me throw this out there. If you're making a hundred or two hundred thousand dollars a month, and and you you want to take a vacation, and you don't do the rule of five. Okay, all right. We'll but if you're in the grind of your life and you're trying to create this to be something that will change your financial blueprint forever, guys, you can't stop the rule of five at all. In fact, you have to do it more than once a day. You got to 10 exit all day, every day until you get to your goal. I'm talking about six and seven figures. My telemarketing job never gave me the opportunity to make seven figures a year. So as soon as this came along and they said that that's an option, all I have to do is work more and do more, I'm not afraid to roll up my sleeves. I'll get to work right now. So I'm going to calm down a little bit. Rule number two of the uh, rule of five okay. is... Um, rule of five. So number one, <laughs> please be a product of the product. Rule two, you must prospect every single day. And we talked about how to prospect. Remember, I gave you the, the analogy of the why, right? You can either prospect when you're out and about talking about the four F's and then you prospecting or branding yourself on Facebook but everything regardless if you're out and about or you're prospecting online everything always leads to enrollment all roads lead to enrollment. all roads lead to enrollment guys we were at so, a, a business training the other night and Warren Lance was there and he was talking that was awesome because uh, he's some he's somebody that we've respected and followed yeah, since you don't know who one. Warren Lance is he's been in our company for about ten and a half years and he's an inspiration and he he yes. knows the game he knows this business yes he does make okay. well over seven figures a year and he's doing just fine but what he said was that blew my mind he's like guys guys do do your two three five contacts a day and your life will change D just get it done contact the two three or five people a day every single day you stay consistent and your life will totally change he said in the beginning, it is scary, it's hard, you know, like nobody wants to do it. Nobody wants to get up and say, oh, I'm going to tell everyone about my business today. Nobody wants to do that, but you want a different result for your life so that you get over your fears, you put the, you put the expectation, the emotion out of the work, you put it into your goals, and then you get to work. But guys, he wasn't saying contact 100 people a day. He was talking about two and three and five people a day will change your life. Let's let's think about that. If you're doing it on the outside and you're doing it online, bringing it, you know, on that why, lean to enrollment. You you got it in the bag, Look, guys. And we teach you how to do this so much more easier. When you're doing the implementing the four F's, and I'll go over that in just a minute. You're doing the four F's, and you're branding yourself appropriately online. It always leads to adding people into your product page. This is the secret sauce that Paul and I have been teaching. The product page is the secret sauce and it leads to enrollment. How easy is it to build a business mm -hmm. now? Mm -hmm. So rule number one of the rule of game, of the, uh, the rule of five is to make sure that you are a product of the product. Two, you should be prospecting, adding people into your product page. Three, you should be following up. What does that mean? If we're 10xing this, that means you're educating, you're inspiring, and you are posting inside your product page. Can you follow up with somebody via text or calling them on the phone or sending them a private message? Yes, but you can also follow up inside the product page. If you are not strategically doing your business online in this way, I don't know what you're doing. You should be spending your time in the product page, inspiring people, being somebody's cheerleader, telling people that you believe in them and you look amazing, keep going, teaching about the products inside the product page, showing before and afters, whether it's your own or somebody else's, Share, 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 and teach inside the product page. That is considered following up. 
Rule number four of the rule of four of the rule of five game is well, guys, she she kind of blended it in there. Actually, rule number four is teach people about the product specifically. Okay, so when we're talking about following up, we're talking about your posting, your educating. Following up is nothing more than education and tools. exposures. You're using the tools okay. as well. Education and exposures are following up. Now. The way that we teach this is we teach it in the product page because that's our storefront, that's our virtual storefront. So with that in mind, you're also going to combine rule number four of the rule of five, which is teach people about the products. It is your responsibility to teach people in your store about your products. Please, some of you are not understanding this. You can't leave it up to Tracy, you can't leave it up to Jill, you can't leave it up to Tanya Kirkpatrick to do all the training for you. We're changing the Facebook algorithm and when you post, you post in your product page, your prospect gets a notification and how amazing is that when they get a no notification because they go, oh, you know, such and such just posted, you bring them back into the product page. That's the whole beautiful idea with the product page and once you understand how powerful the product page is, I mean when you can really wrap your head around how powerful this page is, your business will explode. So you're teaching about products. That's rule number four, and then rule number five, you should be teaching about the business in your business page. Now look, when Paul and I began our Periscope episode, we were kind of uh, okay trainers, okay teachers. We actually became better as we got more into our Periscope trainings. We became and we re refined ourselves as leaders. Here's the reason, because we need to refine the information for us so that we can communicate it to you. What did that do for us? It actually refined the information for us to apply as well. So when we're talking about teaching people about the business, guess what? If you don't have a team, guess who you're going to teach? Yourself. You're going to teach yourself about the business. So with that in mind, you want to do these every single day. I'm going to run them through them real quick one more time and I'm going to highlight a few things. Number one, be a product of the product. Always stay active, guys. And there's a good, better, best way of doing this, and I'm going to tell you that in a second here. A good way to do it is well, all we could do is just to stay active. We did the minimum. Number, uh, the, the better option would be to not only stay active, but add some more products in there so that you can experience everything that your company has to offer. And the best is using all the products all the time, as much as you possibly can, not only because they're amazing, but so you can get a better product experience for yourself, you can internalize the results for yourself and then move on. So good, better, best. Number two is prospecting. Number three is following up. Number four is teaching people about the products in your product page. And number five is teaching people about the business in your business page. Now, whether you have a team or not, you're teaching somebody. And if that starts with you, then that's okay. But you should be putting this information out there so that anybody could latch onto it and move on. You're not the expert on rule number four and five. You're not the expert. You're gonna use the company tools. You're gonna to use the company articles, the information that's provided to you already because that's what's duplicatable. You knowing everything is not, but you knowing where to find the information and how to serve that into other people's lives, then that's duplicatable because they could do the same thing. Okay? okay, before we wrap this up, because I know it's a beautiful Saturday and we wanna let you go, but many of you are brand new. We're getting hundreds of people, new followers on Periscope and you probably are going, I don't, know what they're all talking about regarding the product page or regarding the four F's. I'll go over that real quick and then just please stay with Paul and I on future episodes because we're constantly layering but hopefully this will be a reminder for some of you if you are brand new. All right. Look familiar. You are either branding yourself on Facebook. Please get off Instagram. Stay off Instagram. I still see many of you on Instagram and you're sharing your stuff on Facebook. Instagram is the is not the most appropriate way or most efficient way to build relationships and have authentic connection and it's not team oriented. You want to get on Facebook. I'm not saying not to use Instagram. Just spend less time on Instagram. Come back to Facebook. You're branding yourself using the the, the two week turnaround and you are putting people into your product page. The product page is not a community health beauty group page or a, not a group page, a community public yeah, page. Yeah, public page yeah. A product page is a private page. We have 33,000 people in our product page and this is where we're teaching everybody. This is the secret sauce. This is how you build your business using 2.0 business methods. 
many people still doing old school technique, this right here will explode your business, having a product page. And when you're out and about, Paul and I teach you about the four F's. If you're out in a restaurant or you're at Target or you are, you know, your yoga class, you can simply ask people, you know, how long have you been working here or you're, you know, making small chat with people. And essentially, that's why I'm wearing this shirt. Yeah, guys, can you so, see my shirt? It's so easy, yeah. You know? You know, Paul, you know, um, you've worked here for quite a bit and you've waited tables on me. You did an amazing job. How long have you been working here? 14 years. For 14 years? Yes. Well, you did an awesome job. I can actually see you doing what I do. So you should do what I do. What do you do? Ah, I help people feel better, get them fabulously fit and financially free. Are you on Facebook? And the only reason I say 4S is because it's so easy to remember. I don't have to remember and, and think about something else that I just can't remember. I freeze up all the time. But if I can help people get fit and financially free and get them fabulously fit, I always ask them, if I can't remember the other Fs, I always ask them, are you on Facebook? And this is when I build trust by pulling up my Facebook app, handing them my phone, and say, hey, are you on Facebook? He finds I'm himself. Sure and then I friend request him right on the spot. This allows me to get him into my product page, right? And again, everything leads down to enrollment. So that is what the four Fs are. It is literally saying, you should do what I do. And if you're uncomfortable with saying that, Somebody messaged me yesterday in regards to, well, I only make, you know, I only cycle one time a week. I don't even feel comfortable saying that because I can't get anybody financially free. Well, I'm going to say this. That is you being on the crazy train, okay? It's not that you're cycling one time a week that is the issue. What is the issue is your own self-worth. That is the issue. And we'll go into the core wounds on how you can release the self-worth issues that you may have. But here's what she means by this. When we were cycling once a week, in our minds, we were executives, we were, uh, executives um, cycling a thousand times a week. Right now, we're not cycling a thousand times a week, but in our minds, you know what? That's just a matter of time before it happens. You know what I mean? Like, when we're talking about you should do what I do, I help people feel better. I help them feel uh, get fabulously fit. I can show them how to get financially free. I didn't say that I was yet, but I can show you how to do it. I could show you the vehicle. Yeah. Because I'm not the expert, but I could show you where to go to, to get the information. It's not about you, it's about them. Like, it's, um, you know, if you have that uncomfortable feeling, we didn't say that you were financially free, teaching people how to become financially free. You we're saying that you can show them how to do that. You can show them where to go, because that's where you're going. So the beautiful thing is that if you just take the emotion out of what you're saying and you just say it, guys, they don't, they don't, uh, we, I know what people are thinking. Well, if I say that, then they're going to say, well, are you financially free? No, nobody says that. Nobody asks the that. reason is you've already guided the conversation to move on. Are you on Facebook? Now they're thinking about the question you've just asked them, not what you just said before. So it becomes a non-issue. There's no, there's no issue there. And you're not trying to be anything that you're not. You're just telling people that you have a vehicle that you're going to get there. Uh, and then I can show you the same, you know, and, and another alternate way this makes it, makes it more comfortable for you. I like if, this. if you meet someone, you can just simply say, you know what? You remind <coughs> me of Tanya Kirkpatrick or you remind me of uh, a successful business partner that I that I've linked arms with you remind me of Tracy O'Malley or Jill Bowman you should actually do what they do you should do what they do and then they'll ask well what do they do let me go ahead and plug you into the product page and, and I'll show, show you, you what they do everything about it yeah. real quick somebody's asking for the four F's again yes this is how we prospect outside in the real world we compliment someone then we ask them a question this is important because okay. you are always wanting to add value to people's lives so please compliment and then ask a question you waited tables amazing or you're a great bartender or that's a beautiful necklace where did you get that guys it's right? that simple it's a the, there's the compliment and there's the question then she says where she got the necklace small talk small talk and then you say well you should do what I do and then people say well what, what do, do you do? do I'm so glad that you asked I help people feel, feel better, better, get, get fabulously, fabulously fit. fit. Although Paul doesn't say fabulous, it's okay. <laughs> you can rephrase that. And we help them get financially free. Are you on Facebook? This is the most important F that you must remember is are you on Facebook? 
and then build trust by handing them their phone and find them on Facebook. I, you know, there have been times where I cut out the other three Fs and I just went straight to are yeah. you on Facebook. Because they're like, well, what do you do? Well, I'm like, well, are you on Facebook? And they're like, yeah. Well, let me show you what I do. I'll add you to our, our uh, private uh, group and, and see what it's all about. Okay. That's where it ended. Uh, so we friended okay. each other and then off they go. So, um, you know, if you can't remember the other three Fs, just, just ask them, are they on Facebook? But the four Fs are easy because it sets people up in a mind frame that, okay, you have something that would be great for me feeling better or I have a little money issue that you might be able to address for me too. So you're planting seeds, you're planting seeds. That's why we would do all four apps, okay? Okay, let's wrap this up. But yes. It's a beautiful Saturday and I've got some gifts that I've got to send out to my team and we've got lunch. Oh yeah, I love lunch. Gonna... Guys, <laughs> I love real, lunch. <laughs> real quick, somebody said if they're not on Facebook, can we use email? What we teach is is, school, is the yeah. is the newer methods of using social media to our benefit. It will also be to their benefit if they're on Facebook. If they're not, we never turn anybody away. Yeah, I mean, right. we'll ask, we'll do the whole thing. You should do what I do. What do you do? We'll do the four Fs. Are you on Facebook? No, I'm not. Well, that's okay. Let me show you what we do. You can exchange numbers. You can get emails. Whatever it takes to the whole, move the interaction up. But the okay? whole purpose of asking if they're on Facebook is I'm pre-qualifying them. I am the CEO of my own company. I want to make my job a little bit easier, and it's so much more easier when you have Facebook because it's team-oriented. I've got the community, so I'm pre-qualifying them actually. So then at that moment, at that point, if they're not on Facebook, I can make the determination if I want to continue with this business transaction, if you will. Mm -hmm. Okay. So let's wrap this up. I know you guys have many, many questions and we'll continue layering on our episodes so to make sure that you get all the information that you need. But we hope that today with the big aerial view of ebb and flow, please don't get frustrated within this business. Know when to crank it out. Know when to 10x everything. Know when um, to not get frustrated in this business because there are ebb and flows, seasons within this business and you just need to look at everything from a year's standpoint and know when to crank things out. Now the beautiful thing so, is we are in the busiest season of the year so let's 10x everything. Uh, coffee is $42.5 billion. Focus, focus, focus teach, on today. Teach about coffee. Teach about coffee. Focus on today. Okay. What can you do? What can what value can you add? What can you do to 10x your business just today? Don't worry about the other days. Just today. Yep. Don't forget to read. Don't forget to be writing your affirmation, saying it with emotion. Please don't forget to be writing your daily goals. Do the things that you've got to do. Just crank it out. Work in 50-minute blocks if you're super busy. Time it. Put on the on the microwave or on your phone. Work in 50-minute blocks. Get in, get out, do what you've got to do, and get on with life. We love you so much. We hope that we added value to your life, and we want nothing more than to... You guys live the most extraordinary life. You can have it. Always free from physical and financial pain. So join us on this mission. Because it's a stone cold fact. We've got a better way. Let's, Let's go, go tell, tell the, the world. world. We love you. 10X.